This is episode one of the Play Like a Jet X's and O's series. And today we're gonna kick it off looking at the Jets pin and pull action. And this was a package that Mike LaFleur really utilized well to help turn around the Jets offense last season. Not just in the running game, but also the play action and run action looks that he brought off it. So let's break down the film and I'll show you why the pin and pull was so effective. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Cereal reinvented. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. 140 calories per serving, and they're keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. I personally like the peanut butter the best. Really incredible how much muscle building protein is in there, how little in the way of carbs and sugar, considering how great the taste is for the peanut butter and all the other flavors, but peanut butter is my personal favorite. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box using the promo code PLAJ for five bucks off. Cocoa, fruity, frosted peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry muffin, cinnamon roll. And do not forget that Honey Nut is coming back to the permanent collection, so you can add that to the box as well. I recommend the peanut butter. It's my personal favorite. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will give you your money back, no questions asked. Click the link below, use the promo code PLAJ for five bucks off, or go to magicspoon.com slash PLAJ to save five bucks off your order today, and be sure to add the new Honey Nut to your custom box, and trust me, try the peanut butter too. Also for Canadian and British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK too, so enjoy. What's going on everybody, it's Luke here from Play Like a Jet, and today we are back with a new series looking at the Jets X's and O's from the 2021 season. What are some of the packages that were heavily utilized or that we can see really allowing the Jets to thrive in 2022? As I mentioned in the intro, the place that we're going to start today is the pin and pull run action and the play action passes the Jets used off it. Why is this the focal point? Because I believe this is where Mike LaFleur went deepest into his bag of tricks. And this is the package that I saw develop the best and allow the Jets to have the most success last year. So what are the principles or the characteristics of the pin and pull run? I've grabbed an example here from the Houston Texans game. You're going to see Tevin Coleman get the ball and run to the left-hand side of the Jets formation. It's just a modest gain. But what are we looking for? What are these key characteristics? I want to start by getting your attention to the left-hand side of the Jets line of scrimmage. You've got Ryan Griffin, number 86, and George Fant, number 76. What their objective is, is to seal their defenders to the inside and not allow them to get outside and influence the ball carrier, in this instance, Tevin Coleman, and making sure we trap them to the inside. I think particularly looking at Ryan Griffin, he does a fantastic job moving his feet through the block, his back is to the sideline, and he is containing that defensive end at a very high level. That's then going to allow the pullers to turn the corner and to create space as those lead blockers on the play. Who are they? That's Elijah Vera Tucker and Connor McGovern. They both do a nice job getting out in space, out of their stance laterally on their pulls. Look at Elijah Vera Tucker lead this, the way he's able to kick out the safety and create space. The only reason this isn't a huge gain is because of Connor McGovern. You can see him get to the second level, line up his block, but he gets displaced at the line of scrimmage. He actually loses at the point of contact. He's forced backwards and gets into the way of Tevin Coleman, causes him to stumble and then the uh, will linebacker is able to tidy up the play. But you can see they do a nice job sealing to the inside on the pull and then allowing the running back to get out in space. This is a concept the Jets used a ton. So that's the basic running action that you see with the pin and pull, but it's what the Jets really developed off of that in the passing game that made it incredibly special. Here are a couple of great examples against the Cincinnati Bengals, probably Mike LaFleur's best game as a pass caller in 2021. The Jets come out early doors, first quarter. They're looking to establish the run. The Bengals, they understand this is how the Jets are wanting to play football. So the Jets fake this pin and pull action to the left-hand side of their formation. Look how they send again the guard in the center to the outside. They get the defense and the linebackers flowing with the run action. You can see the fake toss and the extension from Mike White. He gets everybody headed to the left-hand side of the Jets formation. They come at it on this play action look, and then you've got wide open receivers, two of them against this cover three defensive look. So why are the receivers so open? It's because of the nice job from the run action, so that pulling action. You can see the linebacker. Look at the mic between the hashes. He sprints to his right-hand side. It clears out the space for the receivers coming across. 
You can see Denzel Mims, he's faking this hard down block or this crack block that you often see with the pin and pull looks, but instead he comes out of it, comes across the line of scrimmage and finds himself in literally 15 yards of space. Incredible execution and a great play call, which is really tapping into the aggressiveness of the Cincinnati Bengals. And then later on this same drive, talk about synergy and bouncing plays off of one another. Look at the job that Mike LaFleur does. This time, he's going to run pin and pull to the left, and they're actually going to execute the running play. Once again, the Jets do a great job sealing their players to the inside. Have a look at the tight end. I think it's Ryan Griffin again. Make sure he traps number 90. He gets his head to the outside, controls the outside shoulder. That's a really nice job on the seal block. Denzel Mims heading downfield does a nice job influencing the safety. And look at these big dogs in space. You can see both Elijah Vera Tucker and Kyler Croft get out and just clear the way. And that's a very easy touchdown for Michael Carter. But I love the synergy that I mentioned. These plays and the way they are able to influence the defensive line and then build off one another. The very next week, the New York Jets travel to Indianapolis. And once again, Mike LaFleur develops this package even further. And we're going to look first at a running example of the pin pull. Once again, to the left-hand side of your screen, you're going to see the same characteristics and once again, success for the Jets getting their running back out in space. George Fant on the right-hand side of your screen does an excellent job sealing and washing the defensive tackle to the inside. You've got Elijah Vera Tucker and Connor McGovern out pulling in space, both really mobile guys who suit this. Uh, AVT kicking out the defensive tackle, Connor McGovern looking for the first force, which means the first defender he comes across and making sure he blocks him. And actually, this is extremely close to being a house call. The only thing that prevents it from being such is actually Trayvon Wesco on the right-hand side of your screen. His only job is to trap or to seal Darius Leonard and make sure he doesn't get to the outside. His mistake is that he comes too diagonally off the line of scrimmage and he ends up on the inside shoulder of Leonard. He's then able to get to the outside. That absorbs the block of Connor McGovern. And instead of getting to the safety or the deep corner, he's preoccupied there. But here's another great example of the Jets pin and pull look once again to the left. And it was very, very successful throughout the season. The week prior, we talked about the trickery and how they ran play action off it. Well, how do you take it one step further? Mike LaFleur turns it into a little double pass flea flicker. This was an extraordinary job of play calling and once again, layering plays on top of another. Having a goal, make sure you're working in a direction with your offense rather than calling random plays. So letting it run at full speed, they send the fullback out in motion, they're selling toss and pin pull to the right hand side, Mike White gets the ball back, and then he has a wide open Ryan Griffin in the flat, but he leaves it inside shoulder, and ultimately it's nearly an interception. But again, looking at the play, you can see the Jets this time send their right guard instead of Elijah Vera Tucker. He's out on the pull. And once again, look at the gravity it has on the linebackers. They both are sprinting to the left-hand side of their defense. You get this double pass, and then Mike White has all the space and misses the throw. But I just love the way that Mike LaFleur started to build this offense, that he started to create this package based around pin pull, around the toss play, and around the play action passing game. He did a phenomenal job. I wanted to finish by looking at two more examples of the Jets using what I call run action. So play action pass is when, you know, there's a bit of a sell that it's going to be a fake handoff, but ultimately most of the offensive line is actually pass protecting. With a run action, you're going to compromise your pass protection because you're relying on the movement of the defense. And because you're selling it exactly like a running play, you're relying on that being enough to freeze the linebackers and the backside defensive end. This is an excellent example of exactly that. The Jets go back to this pin pull look. You can see they actually motion Dan Feeney as the extra offensive lineman back towards the line of scrimmage. He's going to down block and kick his man to the inside. Does a really nice job being physical at the point of attack. Instead, they send George Fant out in space, another really mobile player. And the Jets use that fake toss motion with Zach Wilson, who gets good extension and sends all the linebackers across. He does enough to slow down the backside defensive end. He comes out and look at the way he layers this ball in to Corey Davis in the perfect location. Corey Davis drops the ball, he hurts his hamstring, and it's the end of his season. But the Jets did a fantastic job, and Mike LaFleur especially, of once again selling the run action fake, not the play action, the run action, and getting a wide open look off the back of it. And the final example today is actually from earlier in the season against the Denver Broncos. The Jets come out in this twin uh, backfield look, and they're gonna actually motion Elijah Moore out. They've then got Ty Johnson left in the backfield, and you've got this very RPO mesh point. 
you can see they're selling an RPO, but the motion again that they're using with their offensive line is this pin pull. You've got crack block from the outside tight end, making sure you're sealed to the inside. You've got McGovern and AVT out in space, but this time, utilizing the motion and the space and how you've put Elijah Moore out to the right-hand side of your formation, Zach Wilson comes out, he fires the ball, and you get this little screen look to the outside, and Elijah Moore picks up a free six yards. And you can get him out of space and utilize his ability with design touches to make explosive plays happen. I just really liked how the Jets were able to build once again. This time, not a play-action look, not this hard run-action fake, but instead, you're kind of getting Zach Wilson utilizing more of an RPO look. You're still having pin pull on the left-hand side of the formation, but then getting your playmakers the football in space. So that's a summary of the Jets' pin and pull action and all the plays they ran off it and why they had a great deal of success. It wasn't just the well-executed running plays or run blocking from the offensive line. It was because they were able to build play action, run action, and also these RPO looks off them. This was a great job from Mike LaFleur and something I definitely see him building off in 2022.